this is awkward. I should have pinned the other side first. Don't be like me. Do it better. Be better. <gasps> My needle. Hi, I'm Teresa. If you clicked on this video, you probably know what The Handmaid's Tale is, so I'm gonna spare you the recap on what that is about. This is a so long video and making wings, which is the outer bonnet that the handmaids wear. To make this hat, you will need one yard of white cotton fabric. You'll need a half a yard of buckram, uh, depending on how wide it is, so In the video I will go over the measurements that that is and I don't even know if those are the correct measurements those that's just my guess on what they are um, but you'll also need some sort of wire um, I used 18 gauge steel wire um, it worked fine I couldn't afford millinery wire is really expensive <laughs> at least the places that I was looking it was it was too expensive because I, I didn't know how many bonnets I'd have to make to get it right but anyways that's a bunch of drama that you don't need to listen to <laughs> So, um, and of course you'll need thread in a sewing machine. I made four pattern pieces. I'll go ahead and put those on the screen right here. There's the brim. You will need two of these pieces. I made a pattern piece for the buckram. The buckram piece is a half an inch smaller than the brim piece. And then there's the under flap part of the bonnet and that has a separate piece and you'll need two of those and then then the back of the hat which you'll need two of those as well so I hope you find this video helpful let's go ahead and get started at this point I have most of my pieces cut out except for this rectangle piece here um, and the reason that I waited is because I'm gonna glue my buckram piece to this and then cut it out so this rectangle that I have is about 23, 24 inches by 14. And here's my buckram piece. It does have a couple of wrinkles in it, but don't worry about that. Um, I ironed as much of it as I could. If I wet this and iron it, it gets, it warps it. So I'm going to glue it to the fabric the way that it is. And after the glue dries, I can then iron it and wet it down. I'm using Craft Bond Spray Adhesive. It's the Elmer's brand. I got this at Walmart um, in the craft section. It's very stinky, so I'm going to wear a mask. I want to make sure that there's no lint or anything stuck to it. Might help to have one of those sticky rollers that you can roll over it. Make sure it's a nice, even coat. I'm gonna do two coats. I'm gonna go down and up and then just double check the sides of it. All right. And now I'm going to take it and press it onto my cotton fabric here, making sure that I have room for the seam allowances. it down the best that I can. Okay. I'm just going to leave my mask on because it's really stinky. This is now glued on pretty good. I'm going to let it sit here and dry. Once it has dried, I'm going to take it over to my iron and iron, get all the wrinkles out and make sure that it's nice and flat. All right, and that's that. I'm gonna let it dry. All right, guys, so once your buckram has dried, you can iron it and get all the wrinkles in your buckram out. My buckram was pretty wrinkled because it's been in storage for a really long time. And the next thing I need to do is cut out my outside bonnet piece. So here I have the pattern that I made. Um, let's see if you can see this. Um, this measurement right here across the bottom of the wings, it'll be in the back of the hat. It is 19 and a half inches. Um, the widest part of the bonnet here is 20 and 3 fourths inches. It is 39 and a half inches around and 17 inches across at the top. Hey guys, 
This is editing Teresa, and I realized I didn't tell you the length from the back to the front, and that part in the middle is 11 and 3 fourths inches. So that, and that's just a guess. I don't know if that's the correct measurements. If you have a bigger head, you might need to make it a little bit wider um, or smaller, depending on your head size. Um, but anyways, I am just going to lay it on here, this, make sure that I have a wide enough seam allowance to, um, to eventually sew my wire in. And I'm just gonna trace this. All right, and you wanna make sure that you're getting it the seam allowance to be as even as possible. And then at the bottom, I'm just cutting right along the background line. I'm not cutting the background, um, just the cotton though. All right, guys, so now that that is cut out, I can serge all of the edges um, because I'm going to be handling it quite a lot. And I'm going to also serge the edges on um, the other white piece for the bottom. are now surged. I'm laying the pieces together with the right sides together and I'm going to pin it down before sewing them right along the buckram line. Not catching the buckram in the, the seam but um, just on the outside of it. Now that I have those two pieces sewn together, I can use this galvanized steel to um, line the brim of the hat. And I'm going to use my zipper foot and sew that on, but first I have to measure out how much I need. I'm gonna cut more than I actually need, just so that I have a little bit of playing room. I just needed enough wire to go around the front of the hat and then across the back of the hat. And I just used my regular scissors to cut it. Not, not my fabric scissors. I mean, I used my craft scissors to cut the wire and it cut through it just fine. I'm gonna bend this part so that once it's sewn in, it's not gonna like fall out. But I want the wire to be able to slide in the fabric once it's sewn in. And I tuck it in between the two seams here. And then I'm just gonna sew as close to the wire as I can. Oh my gosh. Okay. It's kind of like sewing cording, just your cording is wire. Just really take your time when you do this because you don't want your needle to hit the wire. Okay, so the wire is sewn in. I'm very happy with this. It moves inside there. So I'm hoping that because it's, it moves, that it'll be easier to turn it inside out, um, which I 
I'm not going to do right now. I've got to step away and take care of other things in my life, but ah, here is where I'm at right now. Okay. Huh, finally had a chance to sit down and what I'm gonna do next is trim around the curves here and then I'm gonna clip the corners and turn it right side out. just want it to lie as smooth as possible. Okay, so now that I've clipped the curves, I'm ready to turn it right side out. I'm very nervous to do this because at this point, last time I made one, I turned it right side out and it was horrible. Um, this time I've left the wire loose. There's no staining on it. I didn't go back and try to spray down the buckram with the glue. So I have that in my favor, but I'm still nervous. So I don't want the wire to come out. So I'm just gonna bend this part right here, just a little bit um, before I go to try to turn it right side out. It's super awkward with this wire. <sighs> okay, wish me luck. So keeping your wire able to move does in fact make a big difference. Oh, I'm very happy with that. Um, now what I want to do is make sure that and get all the seams even and that the, lot, the wire lays down right. Um, I think I just gotta kind of work the edges here. Turn them. Okay, so if you see here, like the seam kind of wants to roll around and lay on this side of the wire. So I'm just going through and, uh, I don't know how do I word this kind of twisting the fabric, trying to get the seam to line up on the outside. So these two fabric pieces, they're the same size, so I'm pulling them and trying to match them up even, which I'm hoping will pull the fabric tight. Guys, I'm really happy with how this turned out. So the next step, I just need to sew this open edge close, and then I can move on to that little um, inside bonnet part that's part of the wings, not the under bonnet. You know what I'm talking about. Okay. Okay, so am I in frame a little bit? Okay. Now I have my two pieces for the inside part of the bonnet and I'm going to lay them with the right sides together and I'm gonna sew them down um, just around the edges here. The inside bonnet piece is six and three fourths inches long from the back of the head to the forehead. 
It is 17 and 1 4 inches wide in the back. The widest part is 18 inches and around the brim part measures out at 27 inches. So here I'm clipping corners. And then I can turn it right side out and I will take it over to my pressing mat and I will press it. So before I sew this onto the outside wings, I'm going to iron my wings one more time. My wings are looking pretty good, but there's a couple of wrinkles. Once it's curved and in its bonnet shape, it'll get a little bit harder to um, iron. So I'd like to get as many wrinkles out of it that I can. Oops. Sorry, I'm trying to hurry. I've got like 10 minutes and I have to stop sewing for the day. So now I'm gonna go ahead and pin this inside part of the wings onto my bonnet. The inside part of the bonnet is the one that doesn't have the buckram attached to it. So the outside piece, the outside cotton piece is the one that has the buckram glued to it. Okay, I wanna make sure that it's even. So I'm just gonna use my thumb to kind of guide it. It's probably not the professional way to do it, but my thumbs are pretty symmetrical. Thank goodness. Um, I'm just gonna measure it for good measure, just to be sure. So I have about an inch of space on this side and an inch of space on that side. So I'm gonna go ahead and pin it down. That is good enough for me. I'm going to sew it just right along that serged line there. The last thing that I'm going to do today is bend this wire. I'm going to put a little loop here. Bend it to the best of my ability, and then I'm going to hand sew it into this seam right here. When I sew this on, I'm going to go ahead and double up my thread to give it a little bit more strength since I am sewing wire on and not just fabric. For the next step, I already have my needle threaded with a knot on the end, and I need to secure the wire across the back. So what I'm gonna do is bend this and try to tighten it as much as I can and hand sew it down, and then I'll stitch the rest of the wire inside the seam if I can. I'm gonna go ahead and cut some of this extra wire off. And my craft scissors cut through it pretty easily. These are pretty messed up scissors too. Look, they're even <laughs> broken a little bit, but they still do their job. That's what counts. So I'm still leaving a little bit extra here. Uh, so I'm folding it. I'm gonna push it. This is the, the stuff that I'd really like help with because I just, I don't know, and I can't make, continue to make bonnets because I don't have the time. Now I'm gonna take it over to my machine and attempt to sew it into the seam, I think. But I might, you know, I think, Maybe I should just zigzag stitch it to the top. I just don't want the wire to be seen from the outside, but since this will be inside the bonnet, 
I think maybe a small zigzag is the way to go. All right, so for my zigzag stitch, I think, I think if I put it on three, maybe two and a half, I'll try that. Try that first. Oh yeah, I think that'll be perfect. Here it's gonna get a little tricky because I already have wire. I have the wire, it comes over here and it's folded in this way. So, I don't know. I don't know how it's gonna work sewing it. I might have to sew that by hand, but I'm gonna try to sew it with the sewing machine first. Let's see, and just take it really slow. I'm pretty much just turning this by hand right now because I don't want to break my needle. Okay. Now I'm going to go backwards a little bit. I want to reinforce this. That's gonna have to do. I don't think I can do any more with that. Alright, so I'm starting midway. I'm gonna work my way down and then work my way back up. Gosh, I probably don't need all of this. That is done. I'm gonna iron it one more time. But All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and let the brim rest over there and focus on the back of the hat for a while. This back piece is nine and three fourths inches tall. It is 20 and three fourths inches across the top and it's 17 inches across the bottom. The widest part of this piece is 14 and 3 fourths inches from a point to point. I have my two hat pieces and I did search these ends because um, I don't want them to fray while I'm working with it. But I'm going to lay them with the right sides together. And then I'm going to sew one inch down across the bottom and then one inch up. and I'm gonna clip the corner, just like that. And do the same thing on the other side. All right, 
right, now I'm going to turn it right side out. So then I pick the corners out with a pin and I iron it down. I think I probably should have clipped these a little bit. Might as well do it right. That lies a lot flatter. It's much better. I'm gonna pleat the back until um, it's about the length from here to here. Next thing I have to do is sew two lines across here and I want to sew it one inch or so up and then like a half an inch and then the other one. Okay. That's what I'm up to now. Do you want to say hi? Do you want to say hi to the camera? Say I got Cheeto fingers. Don't get your Cheeto fingers on every day. Do you get your Cheeto fingers on every day? Don't get your Cheeto fingers on every day. Wow. All right, so while I'm sewing, I want to keep it even with this line right here that says 20. Okay, and this time when I sew, I'm going to keep the edge of the petal here even with the stitch line. All right, so before I clip the thread and take the little pins out, this is what it looks like. Um, Normally, when I would sew something like this on, I would start at the top and then sew down so that it would be even on both sides. I can't really do that with the bonnet because of the wire. It doesn't fit under my sewing machine and I don't want to bend it all up because it'll be really hard to iron it after that. So I'm going to very carefully try to pin it on, making sure that I get the center of the brim and the center of the back bonnet piece. So I'm going to put the right sides together and I'm not sewing both of these pieces. I'm going to go back and hand sew this on the inside. Okay. So here's center. Now I have to find center of my brim. It doesn't have to be exactly perfect, but I think right here is center. I'm going to I'm poke myself. Okay, so I'm laying it on here and I'm matching the pins. And then I'm going to just pin it like that. So when I was sewing these two lines on, I should have left these open just a little bit so that I could tuck the bonnet brim inside there and I can go back and make it pretty later by hand. I think just the top part, I should be able to leave the bottom stitching. Okay, so if I stretch it down here, I could then stretch it to there. So I'm going to start here and I'm going to sew around here. I'm going to take the pins out and then I'm just going to carefully guide it along. And if I didn't measure right, then I might have some hand sewing to do to fix it. Seems to be good. Ish. Oh, 
I don't know. I hope I'm not messing up my hat, but this is awkward. I should have pinned the other side first. Don't be like me. Do it better. Be better. Okay, I must have hit the wire. Yep, look at that. Clean break. So, it happens. That's why I have this dirty sewing machine. No, I don't know. <sighs> okay. All right, there we go. Good as new. Done. Okay, so I am going to go back a little ways to about here. And I'm going to re sew this part up to there, a little bit further out. Okay, so that was super awkward. I don't really have any good tips to make that easier. It's gonna be awkward. But all in all, I think it's not too bad. All right, there's a light at the end of the tunnel. I am almost done with this hat. And if you're sewing along with me, you're almost done too. The only thing left is to whip stitch the inside flap on the back part. Not this flap, but this one. So I'm going to tuck in the surged edges and just whip stitch all around this way. But I will show you it when it's done and give you a close up of the whip stitch and what it looks like um, after doing that. Okay, so I am done with the hat. I'm gonna go ahead and show you the inside real quick. Um, but before I do that, I wanna show you what I did with these needles here. So Here's what I planned on using to sew the inside part of the hat and this is what I actually ended up using and I just bent a regular needle because it was so much thinner. This was the only option they had at the store when I went. They didn't have any smaller needles than this um, but this ended up working just fine. And here is the inside part of the hat. Um, it's not the prettiest job. Let me see if I get a better light. Hold on. And that's a wrap for this video. <laughs> you like me? You can't wear this hat. It's creepy. <laughs> if you like this video or if you found it helpful, give it a thumbs up. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Hopefully, you did find it helpful. Um, and um, if not, meh, I tried my best. So I hope your day is wonderful, and I will see you next time.